So it's been more than six months since Apple and Trending Peaks announced their planned native integration between the two platforms. The idea behind this is allows companies like Trending Peaks to get their workouts natively into the Apple Watch workout app without having to build their own workout app for the Apple Watch. That's really important because developing an Apple Watch app to record all sorts of fitness data and then have planned structure workouts and all these different things takes a lot of effort. And for most of these trending providers, they don't want to do that. They already have some sort of iPhone app. They just want to push the workout from their phone to the watch and then have you execute it using the workout app. Thus, when Apple announced this back in June at their worldwide developer conference, the idea was that developers could take advantage of it. And a couple of them already have. In addition to Training Peaks today, we saw Trainer Row, which is a cycling and running and triathlon platform, all the way back in September announced this, as well as seeing Final Surge announced in October and a few other platforms as well. Also, I'll apologize up front if things seem a little bit slow for me today because I was up in the four o'clock hour, which is not my normal time to be able to record this in the five o'clock hour so I can get to the airport and really darn soon here. Then to get this working for Training Peaks, you need to ensure that your phone is up to date, then ensure that your watch is up to date, and then finally ensure that the Training Peaks app on your phone is also up to date. Once that threesome is complete, then you are ready to get started. From there, the very first thing you're gonna see on the Training Peaks app is a new Apple Watch plus Training Peaks integration. You go ahead and click connect to Apple Watch, and then from there you got two things you need to connect. The very first thing at the top there is to connect the Apple Watch workout app, this thing right there, to Training Peaks. Essentially, you're authorizing your watch to receive workouts from Training Peaks. When you do that, you've effectively got two options on the next page. In that middle chunk there, you can choose how you want it to send structured workouts. Do you want it to send them on demand for today, or do you want to send them for the next seven days worth of workouts? I would choose the next seven days. It just makes your life a lot easier. Also, at the bottom, you'll see the option to enable push notifications. That's for kind of a whole slate of different things in the Training Peaks app. Also, I would enable that as well. So then you'll go back and need to authorize the Apple Health side of things. This allows Training Peaks to read that workout after you completed it and then push it to the Training Peaks platform. This is actually not telling Training Peaks that it's okay to write to Apple Health. That's because the native workout app is doing that for you. It just simply wants to read that data and then send it along to the Training Peaks platform. Once all that's done, you're ready to get cooking. From there, the idea behind this is that you have your structural workouts that are planned on Training Peaks on your calendar. They do need to be on your calendar. They just can't be in the general workout library of Training Peaks. So you can see here, here is my calendar with a whole bunch of different workouts on it, and those will automatically get pushed to my So if I were to go crack open the workout app there, again, not the Training Peaks app or anything like that, just the workout app there, you'll see at the very top a new block. Now, this block exists for each one of the training platform providers. So you see one for Training Peaks or Trainer Road or Final Surge, et cetera. It's the first time we've seen third-party integrations directly within the workout app itself. Now, if you tap the dot, dot, dot in the upper right-hand corner, you'll see additional workouts. So for example, today, there's two planned structure workouts. There's a running one and a cycling one. I can also go down to the bottom there and choose view more and see those additional seven days of structure workouts that I pushed to the watch. So you can see today, upcoming, et cetera, for each one of these. And I can further see ones in the past seven days as well at the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and tap the back option though just to get back to here and then look at the one for today. I'm gonna choose the dot, dot, dot again on that and I can see what the actual structure is. So you can see a warm up 1.5K, the pace, the work efforts, the recovery. Uh, if we go down here again, workout again, recovery and so on. For some of these, you'll see basically structure in them where they do repeats and things like that. Anything that's supported by the platform will show up here. Note that this is just for running and cycling workouts today. So something like a swimming workout isn't supported by Apple Watch today from a structured workout standpoint. You can just simply do a swim workout, but you can't actually have the whole thing structured and pushed from Training Peaks. Once you're ready to get going, you'll tap back again and just simply tap that running option there. Then you have the option to do indoor run or outdoor run. So let me just start off with the outdoor run first. We'll tap that. Uh, and then you can see right there, this is the first work portion. If I start, you can see the workout up there, 1.5 kilometers, and then the pace at the bottom. And that's again for that first interval chunk. I can always skip ahead by just double tapping the up to the left hand corner. And you can see now I went from the work interval to the rest interval, the recovery interval. And you can see there I'm recovering for a half a kilometer and then the pace is listed down below. And I'll simply iterate through this the entire time over and over again. Now, as I mentioned earlier, it is important to note whether or not you're on an indoor workout or an outdoor workout. Because in an indoor workout, 
the Apple Watch doesn't support any sort of pace targets. So I learned this the hard lesson last night when I went to do an indoor treadmill workout, and all it would tell me was simply just the duration for each interval. Nothing about the actual pace targets or anything like that, which is sort of weird to me, especially launching this feature in December when it doesn't work on treadmills. And that isn't a training peaks limitation, but actually an Apple Watch limitation. Their structure workout system doesn't support pace targets indoors. Instead, it's just heart rate targets. Equally, also doesn't support running power targets targets on either indoor or outdoor runs or any runs at all for that matter. Now, where it does support power targets is over on the cycling side. So let's take a look at that. So back in the workout app, I choose a dot, dot, dot in that corner there. And I go down here to this cycling one. There's both a heart rate one I've created for today as well as a power one. I'm gonna choose that power one right there. You can see the work efforts are defined in power. So work, 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 and so on down the list here for each one of these recovery intervals and so on uh, all the way to the end. Now, if I tap back there again, I can choose that to get started. I'm gonna do an indoor cycle this time. And then I'm basically off to the races just like I was before. I did a few of the different power target workouts over the last few days. And as you arrive into each one of the different recovery interval portions, it'll tell you exactly what power numbers you're supposed to be at. I connect my power meter on my indoor cycling bike. It works with both indoor smart trainers as well as just general power meters. Note that the watch itself won't control your smart trainer. You need some other app for that. You can see right here, I'm actually using Zwift and it's pulling that same training peak structure workout and it's executing that there. And then I'm also just simply recording that on my Apple Watch as well. Now the entire recording process worked just fine. However, one caveat I found is that the Apple Watch when connected to a power meter uses instant power. And if you've been around power meters at all, you know those power numbers fluctuate quite a bit. That's totally natural. Most companies will use a smooth value over like 10 seconds usually to determine whether or not you're in compliance with the workout. Unfortunately, Apple doesn't do that. As a result of that, I got constant alerts telling me I was too high or too low for the target. This is on a $3,500 indoor smart bike, pretty much the best bike out there, and it holds those targets perfectly fine and perfectly smoothly. You basically get alerted every like 10 to 15 seconds, which is just really super frustrating. The good news is this is an easy fix and hopefully it's something Apple will adjust for future updates. And again, you don't have to have a cycling power meter for the entire cycling side to work. You can use heart rate targets as well to achieve the same thing. You can see that right here in the structure workout with the different heart rate targets for all the different components of this particular workout. Now, one big gap that's really important to point out, whether you're going for an outdoor run like I am now, an indoor run, an outdoor ride, an indoor ride, is that after that initial interval target screen is displayed that shows the upcoming target, that disappears in a few seconds and you actually have no idea what the target target is anymore. In other words, no idea what the target heart rate is or target power is or target speed, cadence, whatever the case is, there's no way to see that on the watch anymore. So as you're going through that interval, you're kind of like, wait a minute, what am I supposed to be at right now? And of course, some of you are probably saying, how's that any different from the last year and a half on the watch since they've had structure workouts? Well, the key thing is that you had to create those structure workouts on the watch itself. Up until this point, you couldn't do it from a third party provider and sync it to the watch. So you had to do it all there yourself. And so your complexity level was relatively small and you were the one that created those workouts versus now it's third party platforms, it's coaches, it's automation, it's AI, it's whatever you want to call it. And given that most workouts are unique every single day, you're generally not going to memorize the exact content of a 30 step workout as you go out for your run, your ride, wherever the case is. But it should be a really easy fix for Apple to add a data field that simply shows the target value at all times. Now, once you finish your workout, you'll save it just like normal. You will notice at the top of that completed workout that'll show the actual name of the workout. You're also given the option at the bottom to save it into your library workouts on the watch. So if you're like, hey, I really like this workout and want to suffer again in this particular way, you can easily access that beyond that seven day time period. Then just like normal, it's going to take that workout and push it to your phone and show up in the Apple Fitness app. Again, remember, it's the native Apple workout app doing this. It's not the Training Peaks app at all, or the Final Surge, or the Trainer Road, or whatever the case is. It's just the native workout app pushing it to the native Apple Fitness app. However, behind the scenes, the Apple Fitness app actually pulls from the Apple Health database. And it's that same Apple Health database that Training Peaks is looking at and going, hey, there's a new workout there. I'm going to take that workout and shove it up to the Training Peaks cloud where you can see it on the Training Peaks platform and app. From there, Training Peaks will merge the planned workout with the actual completed workout. It'll show you compliance scores and all that kind of fun stuff and you're off and running. For a first go of things, all this worked relatively well. Of course, Training Peaks has been pushing workouts to different watch platforms for many, many years, so this isn't entirely super new to them. And on the Apple side, they've had structured workouts for about a year now, but the receiving of those structured workouts from third parties is new since this past summer. And as a result of that, you can see a couple of those gaps still. For example, the lack of swim workouts or the lack of paces 
on indoor running workouts or some of those power alerts. And certainly as well, addressing the big gap of not showing the actual workout target somewhere on a data page or screen during the interval. Those are hopefully things that Apple will be able to fix over the coming months. Historically speaking, we've seen Apple do a big fitness push in the December timeframe. For example, this week, we also saw Apple release the Siri integration, being able to open up Apple Health stuff uh, directly from the watch. And then from here, over the next few months, we see them tweak minor things. Of course, Apple's undoubtedly starting to shift their focus and resources towards the next version of watchOS due next summer, probably in the June timeframe again, as well as also integrations with the Vision Pro headset, which is due out in the next few months. So it's not super clear how much time they have to fix all these little things, but I suspect expect we'll see that happen uh, just like we saw it happen last year for track mode and other fitness things they launched in December but kind of cleaned up over the course of the spring. Anyways hopefully you found this video interesting and useful. If so give it a like down the bottom or subscribe for plenty more sports technology goodness. Have a good one. About now some of you are like why is he wearing two watches? Plus the watch here. Well I took this watch off and I had to put something else on so I wouldn't forget the something else that I ran to the airport. So this is how I roll here folks. Two watches all the time. With that I've really got to roll. Catch you later.